All right then, so this is my entry into the 100 Maker Challenge, which was set by um, Leo Wynn Stanley from the YouTube channel Handy Craft. Now, I won't go into specific details, but Leo can only manage to do woodwork with his non-dominant left hand. I won't go into the reasons why, so I'll let you go and visit his YouTube channel and find out why yourselves. Now the challenge that was set, as I've already mentioned, is to use your non-dominant hand. So for me that would be my left hand to produce something woodworking wise for the home or for the garden. Now essentially I am a two-handed tool user. So each step of the process of building what I've built, I had to really think about it, really think how I could perform and do the task safely. It's not a complicated build, but it was certainly a lot more complicated thinking about how I was going to get around certain things. So this is what I come up with. Hope you enjoy it. See you at the end. So the first task, as it was such a nice day outside, was to get the mitosol stand set up. And this is where having a bit of a belly comes in handy because I was able to rest the stand up against me and open her legs up. Now I'm gonna make this step at one and a half lengths of two by fours. So the first tricky bit I encountered was trying to use a tape measure. But eventually I managed to master that technique and was able to go ahead and cut everything out I needed. Then over at the table saw I could make sure my blade was square and then I could set the fence and the blade so I can rip off these rounded over edges on the 2x4s. Now at this point after making the first cut this is where I should have probably gone and changed the insert plate for my zero clearance one but for some unknown reason I didn't do that. Now I thought it might be safer to cut these lengths using my homemade adjustable push block. So I could get that set and adjusted to the height of the wood. And although the 3D printed handle was set up for right handed use, I was able to use it backwards without any real issues and it proved to be a much safer way to make the cuts. Right, so with everything now cut out, I can move back into the garage workshop and get down my sash clamps. I managed to get them set up to the correct size without any real issues. This task would probably work better if you use parallel clamps, but I haven't got any, so it's used what you've got. Then I could get the glue laid on, spread it out nice and evenly, and get it all clamped up. Now I did add this squeeze clamp across the top in the middle just to give it some extra pressure and although I thought it would be easy to use a squeeze clamp it actually proved a little bit harder than I thought. Okay so that was definitely the hardest bit was getting the glue up done, or the hardest bit so far, just trying to keep them level and flat across but yeah, testing at times. Right, so I let everything glue up overnight and I was distracted by the hot weather and beer but the next morning I had to trim everything flush. 
and I thought the safest process for this is probably to use a tape saw sled. And it actually worked really well without any issues whatsoever. There is a slight bit of unevenness in this top piece but I can take that out when I do the sand in. Then I got the table saw blade set to 7 degrees and this was just a rough guess at the angle I would want. Then I could get that angle cut out into the top and the bottom of the legs. I did swap the table saw fence over to the other side because I'm using my left hand it felt a little bit more natural pushing it forward as the wood wanted to go into the fence a lot more tighter than when I was using it on the other side. Now this was my first attempt at a dry fit just to see how things looked. Clearly it wasn't going to work. So I thought if I go back into the garage my worktop in there isn't as slippery as a table saw and I might stand a little bit of a better chance. But even though I try to use myself as a wedge to keep the legs up I think they're a little bit too top heavy to stand up on their own. So I had an idea. I thought if I laid down a thin bead of hot melt glue I could get one of the legs stuck down on that and it shouldn't be too hard to peel it off afterwards. So it worked on the first leg so I could get some on the second leg. Clearly I was chuffed it worked. So this is the design I'm going for. I've massively overestimated the height of the legs so they need to be trimmed down but I'm just testing to see if I like the angle. So I think we'll go with 7 degrees and I'll cut the legs down. So now I've got the legs cut down to the height I want and I want the bottom of the legs to sit flush with the top step. So using a cabinet square I could work out what position they needed to be and how far to inset the top of the legs which worked out to be 25mm. Then I could get my workbench set up outside. And with the workpiece clamped down to the workbench, I could hit it with the belt sander. I was able to take out the unevenness from where these pieces of 2x4s didn't line up exactly flat and parallel during the glue up stage. I also used a belt sander to knock away a little bit of material on the sides and the edges so that the step would look a little bit more well used. Then it's back into the garage workshop using the orbital sander and sanding everything up to 240. And at one point, the sander even managed to get away from me. So then it was the fun and games of trying to make a glove fit. Eventually I just gave up and used it as it was. Next one handed issue was to try and open the childproof lid on this wood die. Then once I finally cracked it I could get a load of the die down and get it all smooshed in. Staining the end grain though did pose a little bit of an issue because I've now stained the top I can't use clamps to clamp it down and obviously I want to push against the wood so it did keep moving so I had to keep bringing it back to the edge of the bench so I could coat it. Then 
as I mentioned earlier, I need to inset the top of the legs by 25mm. So I'm just marking up here where I need to be with them. And I did this in all four corners. Came back with my cabinet square and drew a nice straight line. Then after a bit of battling with the masking tape, I can finally get that put down over the lines I've just previously drawn so that when I apply the stain, these areas won't be coated and I'll have a nice dry area for the glue on the legs and the centre bracing to adhere to. Then in the centre bracing, I used a 10mm drill bit for a countersink Eventually battled with the drill chuck to get it out and fit a 3mm drill bit in and then I could drill all the way through for a pilot hole. Then I could get that clamped down and now mastering my tape measure technique I could get it double checked for position. Changing the bit in my impact driver didn't cause an issue. And then I could get the centre brace in screwed into position. Now double checking and adjusting that I've got the leg in the right spot. Then I clamped the back leg down without using any glue at this point and I used the masking tape as a makeshift clamp so that it could hold the leg I was working on into a rough position so I could get a pilot hole drilled. So my plan was to get this hole drilled through the leg and the centre brace and then when I've got the glue laid down all I've got to do is line the two holes up and the leg should be in the perfect position. It was a bit fiddly to hold this in place and use the impact driver so this is where one of my chins come in handy because I could rest that on the top and get the screw fixed in. So I use the same technique on the other side and then I could get everything clamped up and leave it to dry. Then I gave it a few coats of gloss lacquer sanding in between with 400 wet and dry paper. And this was the final result. For a start, regardless of the fact that I did this one handed, I'm quite happy with how it turned out. But now I've got a sturdy little step stool and I've used up some lengths of 2x4 that have been hanging around cluttering up the place. So there we go, there was my build project, all done using my left hand. I did cheat in the editing of the video because it's a lot quicker, obviously, to edit with two hands. I certainly learned a few things in this challenge. And I got to say, I'd be glad to go back to using two hands. I mean, how do you how do you look silly when you go down a pub and rip open a packet of peanuts and they fly everywhere? How can you do that one-handed? Anyway, that's it for this one. If you liked the video, you know, thumbs up, comment below, hit subscribe, hit the bell. See you again.